grace and peace to you. As one part of the Church of Jesus Christ, we are inspired and guided by Christ's vision of God's realm, one that includes all who seek to love God and neighbor. St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church welcomes all people, regardless of age, race, ethnicity, gender, sexual orientation, gender identity, economic situation, family status, mental or physical abilities, to become part of the membership and ministry of the church. We welcome all of each of you, and we're glad that you're worshiping with us. This is the first Sunday in the season of Advent, and so I invite you to have an Advent candle ready, or really you can use any candle. Have one ready to light after the call to worship. And may this light remind you of the presence of Jesus Christ, the light of the world, who holds us together while we are apart. of dreams lies in waking up for when we close our eyes we can see a better world when we close our eyes we can dream a better dream but when we open our eyes we begin the work of faith the power of worship is the same when we enter this space we can see a better world when we enter this space we can dream a better dream. But when we leave this space, we begin the work of faith. So come in, dream your dream, find hope here. For in an hour, we will begin the work of faith. Let it be so. I dream of fields of blue bonnets. I dream of French oak pie with mile high with cream. I dream of the days when we could be part of a crowd. I dream of snow days. I dream of empty beds in jail cells. I dream of a world that will let kids be kids. I dream of full tables instead of empty bellies. I dream of schools with enough money to teach. I dream of parents with enough money to feed. I dream to keep awake, because if we don't dream of better days, then we might forget that this is not what God imagined. So today, we light the candle of hope. For hope is the very thing that keeps dreams afloat. May this light be an invitation to keep awake. May this light be our invitation to be Advent people people who dream. Amen.
that we have sinned before God and others. Yet we also know that if we confess our sin, we can be restored to a right and just standing before God and others. Let us therefore confess our sin, trusting God's promised mercy. Original Dreamer, over and over again in scripture, we hear your dream for a beautiful world. We hear your dream for peace and reconciliation. We hear, hear your dream for harmony and togetherness. We hear your dream for community and hope. We hear your dreams, and yet we do not open our eyes. We continue to live with the curtains drawn, the covers pulled tight, eyes shut to the realities of the world. Forgive us, kindle a hope in us that will burn through the darkest nights. Give us the strength and the will to keep awake in this sleeping world. With hope we pray. Amen. The good news of this Advent season is forgiveness of sin and new life. So let us commit our lives to Christ's way of hope. Thanks be to the Advent God who comes among us, setting us free to love and serve. This morning I will be reading from the book of Isaiah, chapter 64, verses 1 through 9. The scholars believe that Isaiah was written in three parts, and the third part is in the reading that we will have this morning, and that is after the return from Babylon, where the Jews were, Israel was in exile. That was 539 BCE. Let us pray. Dear God in heaven, let us listen afresh words that we have heard before. Each time we hear these words, we learn something new. In your name we pray. Amen. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence. As when fire kindles brushwood, and the fire causes water to boil, to make your main name known to your adversaries, so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down, 
the mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived. No eye has seen any God besides you, who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But they were angry, and we sinned. Because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind take us away. There is no one who calls you on your name or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our God. We are the clay and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel reading comes from Mark, chapter 13, verses 24 through 37. In those days after the suffering of that time, the sun will become dark and the moon won't give its light. The stars fall from the sky and the planets and other heavenly bodies will be shaken. 
Then they will see the human one coming in the clouds with great power and splendor. Then he will send the angels and gather together his chosen people from the four corners of the earth, from the end of the earth to the end of heaven. Learn this parable from the fig tree. After its branch becomes tender and it sprouts new leaves, you know that summer is near. In the same way, when you see these things happening, you know that he's near at the door. I assure you that this generation won't pass away until all these things happen. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will certainly not pass away. But nobody knows when the day or hour will come, not the angels in heaven and not the sun, only the Father knows. Watch out, stay alert. You don't know when the time is coming. It is as if someone took a trip, left the household behind and put the servants in charge, giving each one a job to do and told the doorkeeper to stay alert. Therefore, stay alert. You don't know when the head of household will come, whether in the evening or at midnight, or when the rooster crows in the early morning or at daybreak. Don't let him show up when you weren't expecting and find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to all, stay alert. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Since Jesus tells his friends a story about a tree, I thought we could have our time with children with the trees. There are no fig trees in sight here, and it's almost winter, so most of the leaves have turned colors or have fallen off their branches. But in you know, three, four, five months, we'll see signs of spring. There will be little fuzzy buds on the ends of some of the branches and bright green leaves sprouting forth. And that's how we'll know that spring is here and summer is coming. That's what Jesus said to his friends. He told them about the fig tree and what it teaches them. He said that when the branches become green and soft and new leaves begin to grow, you know summer is near. So you can use what you know about spring and summer and trees and branches to pay attention to what's happening in the world. He said, so also, when you see all these things happening, then you know the time is near, that I am ready to come. So Jesus told his disciples to pay attention to signs of heaven on earth. Signs that heaven was coming to earth soon. When we look around and pay attention, we see things, we notice things. We might notice in our world, not on the trees, that there are people who need help. We also might notice that there are people out there offering help. We might notice signs of hope that things are getting better. So I want you to pay attention this week to where the world needs help, where the world needs hope, and where there already is hope. Will you pray with me? Dear God, Please help me pay attention to the needs of others. Help me to live as though heaven is on earth and bring hope to everyone. In Jesus' name, amen. A couple of weeks ago in our book discussion, we talked about dreams. Bishop Michael Curry connected both Archbishop Desmond Tutu and Dolly Parton to the importance of dreaming. We had an interesting conversation about what we mean by dreams. Are they the things that happen in your brain while you sleep? Or are they your hopes, your, your wishes, your visions for the future? Well, dreams can be all of those things. This season of Advent, we will spend time with scripture, discovering what it means to dream and what it looks like to live as those who dream. This season can be for us a time of trusting God's deep wisdom 
to guide us from disorientation toward wonder, awe, and praise. We are called to live as dreamers because we know that God has dreams for our world, dreams that things will be different. We've heard Jesus talk about the kingdom of God over and over again. He tells stories with interesting characters and metaphors and unexpected endings to illustrate God's dreams for our world. And we are called to join him in the dreaming and living into the kingdom of God. This first Sunday of Advent begins with a passage from Mark's gospel and Jesus calling his disciples to keep awake, to keep watch. This passage from Mark is sometimes referred to as a little apocalypse. And so when you think about apocalyptic, the first images that come to mind are probably from Hollywood. Think Mad Max or Planet of the Apes or something with zombies. Or maybe you just think of 2020. This is not at all how we want to start the season of Advent in any year, especially this year. We want something warm and fuzzy. Think candles and carols and cookies. Who wants suffering and earthquakes? But the real meaning of apocalypse is not necessarily scary like that. The Greek meaning of apocalypse is revelation. Apo meaning away and kalupsis meaning to cover. So apocalypse is taking away the cover, unveiling something previously unknown. Uncovering something isn't necessarily the stuff of blockbuster films. Jesus is certainly not the first to talk about such things. He's quoting and alluding to many of the Hebrew scriptures, Deuteronomy, Zechariah, Joel, Daniel, Jeremiah, and Isaiah, as we just heard which all underscore the impending crisis of the return of the Son of Man, or the human one. And in case we miss the point, this is a reminder that none of this can be controlled or predicted by humans, no matter how much we might try. That's why Jesus warns his disciples to keep awake, to be watchful. So the season begins not with warmth and joy, but with despair. Humankind has reached the end of its proverbial rope. And despite our best scheming, our plans for self-improvement and for extricating ourselves from the traps we have set for ourselves, we have come to nothing. We've now realized at the deepest level of our being that we cannot save ourselves. And that apart from the intervention of God, we are totally and irretrievably lost. In spite of the power of the Holy Spirit and all of our best efforts and intentions, the world has not yet been redeemed. Therefore, our prayer for Advent, our hope for this season is that Christ will soon come again to rule over God's creation with power and justice. Advent is about remembering the arrival of Christ, a baby born in Bethlehem some 2,000 plus years ago, and about waiting and watching for Christ to return and redeem the world, to make all of those dreams come true. Advent is about God's ultimate dream, to be intimately connected to us, to come down and dwell with us as God did in the incarnation in Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And so we are called to join God in living into those dreams. Those who dream should not fall asleep to the realities of the world. We are called to pay attention to where God's dreams for change and new life are emerging. Pay attention. Jesus teaches the lesson of the fig tree. After its branch becomes tender, it sprouts new leaves. You know that summer is near. In the same way, when you see these things happening, you know that he's near. 
We may not know the time or the manner, but we do know what to look for, how to see that the time is near. We can see evidence of God's dreams on their way to becoming true as we witness signs of God's kingdom in our world. Like the fig tree or like most plants, we can see the branch becomes when it come, becomes tender and fresh, when bright green leaves begin to appear. And when we see those signs, we know that summer is near. Jesus tells his disciples to keep awake and pay attention. He calls them to keep alert because there are plenty of charlatans sounding false alarms that are harmful to God's people. And only God knows the time. Jesus calls his disciples to keep watch and tells the parable of the fig tree just before his arrest and crucifixion. And we know how that story goes. The disciples failed to heed Christ's warning. They literally fell asleep on the job in the garden when he asked them to stay awake with him. And even the women who find the empty tomb on that first Easter morning fail to understand the meaning of watchfulness when they run away in fear. Here we are on the first Sunday in Advent being reminded to keep watch, to remain ever vigilant. Like those first disciples, there are many voices who claim to know how it will unfold, knowing the hour and day and manner of the return. We have 2,000 years worth of charlatans sounding false alarms about whatever crisis is at hand. And only God knows the time and how the real crisis will manifest itself. In Mark, we hear Jesus describe the little apocalypse with the sun going dark and the stars falling from the sky and the story of the servants left to tend the household. What do you think in our world right now feels like a little apocalypse? November 3rd, voter fraud and recounts, the rising coronavirus cases and deaths, 263,000 last I checked, grand jury rulings on police violence, Supreme Court confirmations, economic uncertainty, impending foreclosures and evictions. Any of those can make it feel like we're in an apocalyptic blockbuster. If apocalypse is really about revealing something in a time when just about everything feels uncertain, disrupted, disorienting, or threatening, what is being revealed to us? What is being uncovered? There's a lot of speculation about how things might be different when we return to normal after the pandemic. But maybe some things have been revealed that will lead us to make changes. My sense is that we, it has been revealed that a whole lot of meetings really could have just been emails. And we have uncovered new ways to connect and ways to simplify. We've seen bright green leaves sprouting on the proverbial fig tree branches in little bits of hope and small acts of kindness. So then what does it look like to keep awake? to pay attention. Distractions fall away, perhaps. Maybe the idol that is the glorification of busy can come crashing down. What dreams do we carry with us into this Advent? Dreams for vaccines and treatments for COVID-19? Dreams of small businesses open and thriving? Dreams of hugging grandchildren. Dreams of graduation celebrations and traveling. Dreams of hands-on mission projects done side by side and youth group trips. Dreams of worship together in the sanctuary, singing 
and passing the peace. Dreams from 2020 that unraveled or were deferred. Dr. Marsha Riggs writes about this message for dreamers to keep awake that we find in Mark in context of our particular circumstances. And she says, to begin Advent amid pandemic and protest is a befitting point of departure for 21st century people of God. We are being reminded that to be the people of God requires an ethical posture of attentiveness to keep awake. The text charges us to keep awake because we do not know the day or the hour when the fullness of God with us will be realized. To keep awake means we are being charged in the vernacular to be woke. And being woke, she says, means being aware of, enraged by, and willing to protest in solidarity with people who are pushed to the margins of society because of systemic oppression manifested as racism, sexism, heterosexism, ableism, homophobia, transphobia, xenophobia, any and all forms of objectification and dehumanization, dehumanization we enact upon one another. The concept of wokeness has gained popularity in recent years. The idea has been used and abused and misused. It's been watered down and weaponized. But to hear Dr. Riggs's words about it, we see its roots in Jesus' words to his disciples. Stay awake, pay attention. On this first Sunday of Advent, we light one candle. We usually call this the candle of hope, the light from this candle of hope can help us stay awake and pay attention and see signs of God's dreams being realized in our world. The light from the candle of hope can keep us awake to keep dreaming and envisioning how we live out God's promise to be with us. God is with us in the midst of both protest and pandemic. And God will still be with us on the other side. Waiting for us on the other side of it all is not a return to normal. But as Dr. Riggs says, it is living the hope of God's continuing revelation of justice. We do not know the hour or the day. But we do know, as the African-American poet Langston Hughes says, Hold fast to dreams, for if dreams die, life is a broken winged bird that cannot fly. Friends, we do not know the time or the manner of crisis. Only God knows that. Still, we are called to keep dreaming God's dreams, to pay attention, and to stay awake. Only God knows. We can only anticipate that the times are in God's hands and not our own. We know that God will not leave us alone, for God's dream is to be intimately connected to us. And we know that God will not leave us without hope. May we be those who dream and keep awake. Amen. And now let us affirm what we believe. We believe in God. We believe that God has dreams for humanity. We believe in the Holy Spirit. We believe that the Holy Spirit comforts us when our dreams turn to nightmares. We believe in Jesus. We believe that Jesus walked this world to wake us up inviting us to be the church in the world. We believe in dreams. We believe in the power that dreams have to show us a new way. So in this Advent season, we are those who dream and those who wake up. 
May it be so. Amen. We're glad that you have joined us in worship this day. If you are looking for a church home, we'd love to have you join us here officially in membership or just by connecting with our community. If you have any questions about becoming a part of the life of this congregation, I invite you to reach out to me. I'd be happy to talk to you about what it means to be a part of this congregation. Today we will have a brief congregational meeting to elect our new class of elders and deacons for the class of 2022. So please join us on Zoom immediately following worship for that meeting and then our passing of the peace and time of fellowship. I hope you all, all will sign up for our weekly email if you haven't already. Check out our website and Facebook page so you can see the opportunities that we have to connect during these disconnected times. And now let us pray. God of Advent, we stand at the threshold of this season, hopefully anticipating a birth in a stable in Bethlehem. We await his coming as the Prince of Peace and Justice, the bearer of good news for all who are oppressed and the restorer of your intent for your world. As we wait on this first Sunday of Advent, help, all, help us also to ponder deeply his ultimate coming as our crucified and risen Lord to judge and to heal the brokenness of our world. Indeed, help us to be vigilant in our waiting. Prod us to discern the commonwealth of God in our midst as it strains towards realization now. Empower us as you empowered the psalmist to call for your restoration of our world, our country, and our lives, and to participate in that work. We are like your people of old, wandering in a wilderness, longing for your glory to shine as a light in our darkness. Make your face shine in our midst once more and deliver us from all that threatens us. With the prophet Isaiah, we too implore you to tear open the heavens and come down to do awesome deeds in our midst, deeds of liberation for those in bondage and of hope for those in exile. Help us to recognize with the Apostle Paul the abundance of your gifts that have been given to us for the good of the whole community and empower us to place them in service of the common good. And may the evangelist Mark embolden us for vigilant waiting and watching so that we may leap in and participate at points where your future is crashing into our present time. Prompt us, arouse us to discern and act at those places where your love and justice are breaking forth in our lives and communities. Indeed, during these tumultuous days of racial, political, and social reckoning, help us to overcome paralyzing fear in our personal lives, in our communities, and in our world. Calm the fear in us. Animate courage in us. Make us brave in confronting realities that deform and deface your world so that we may participate in your reconciling work in our midst. And we pray for the world of nations, especially those places where violence is wreaking havoc upon human lives and the life of your creation. We pray for countries dealing with devastation caused by hurricanes, wildfires, and other natural disasters. We pray for those in our country who have lost jobs, revenue, health care, and loved ones during this relentless pandemic. Help us to serve as agents of your love and care to those in our midst who are suffering. And we, praise for wise dis we pray for wise discernment by our nation's leadership as they negotiate ways in which to aid those most afflicted. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This morning, in addition to our regular offering, we will be receiving the joy offering. This is one of the special offerings for the Presbyterian Church USA. The gifts collected will go to the Board of Pensions, which helps support past and present church workers and their families who are facing critical financial circumstances. This offering will also benefit the education and development of our future leaders at Presbyterian-related racial ethnic schools and colleges. At this time of year, the abundance of some and the needs of so many stand in marked contrast. As we bring now our tithes and offerings, may Christ's heart rejoice and the needs of others be tended. If you would like to contribute a financial gift, you can do so by mailing a check to the church or through online giving. You can find a link for that at the bottom of our webpage, sapctucker.org. Now, trusting the sure promise of Christ and grateful for the Spirit's sustaining power, let us bring our tithes and offerings to God as we sing together. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, these gifts we offer are our response to the light which came into the world that first Christmas. Help us in this Advent season to allow that light to shine through us so that the dark areas of people's lives can be pierced by Christ's love. Amen. Keep awake. 
God's future is breaking into our present lives. Be ready to jump in at those places where God's future is straining towards realization now. Fear not for God's spirit will empower us to participate in that future. As we wait for Christmas and for the coming of Christ's kingdom, we are called to help make Christ's light and love visible in the midst of the darkness. Even while we are physically apart, we join together in the waiting and in the working. So go out into the world to live your hopes and not your fears, knowing that you are held in holy hands that will never let you go. Alleluia. Amen. After our sung benediction response, you are invited to join us over on Zoom for a brief congregational meeting and then to pass the peace and to share a time of fellowship. And so as we prepare to depart from our worship gathering in peace and carry our worship out into the world, let us greet one another with the peace of Christ. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. Go in peace. Let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away 